Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. All the way from Miami, I've got Mr. Eats305 here with me today. Founder, content creator of uh, Mr. Eats305. Uh, he's the Miami guy helping everybody find the best eats. And so I'm so thrilled to have him. Um, and yeah, thank you for joining me and digging into what you do. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about it all. Yeah. So I just first want to ask the cheesy, corny question of what made you fall in love with food? Where did your food passion come from? Yeah, so it's something that I've always just grown up with it being Cuban. Uh, in the household, there was always home cooking and you kind of grew up with that. So the love of food kind of always happened and has always been around me. The love of content creation, helping others find it started with when my fiance and I first started dating, just like every couple kind of does, you're going out to eat every weekend because that's like the thing to do this was back in 2016 and i was posting snap on my snapchat like to my friends because this was back before instagram had stories or any of what it is today and they were asking me like oh where'd you go this time would you order right. Right. so that kind of sparked the idea of let me not just help my friends out let me kind of help other initially help other guys find places to take their partners out to, to eat yeah, or things to do. It was, it was kind of like that sort of compilation. Um, however, I noticed that back then more still to today, but back then more, it was mostly females that were on social, like actually present and active on social media. So I kind of had to gear my content to a more neutral tone rather than just like spearheaded for yeah, a male audience. And, and yeah. So with that over time, uh, I started doing it as a hobby, 2016, 2017, went to law school, 2018, yeah. um, while I was in law school from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, it was, um, building that, uh, little by little yeah. until what it is today. And I've been full time since the end of 2021. I just want to hit on what you just said too. Like you were in law school. What was the final like click in your mind? Like I'm gonna go do this full time. Like what was the moment? So it was like a bit hectic with COVID and being in law school and doing all that. Um, it was so I I took the bar exams. Yeah. Um, and there's a waiting period of like two months before you find out your results. Okay. So I had two months of basically dedicating my time to something else. Yeah. A hundred percent, which okay. I had never been able to do yeah. for Mr. Eats. Yeah. Um, so I told myself, I drew up a business plan and I said, if I hit these goals, yeah. regardless of, of the result, um, I'm going to do this full time and see where that takes me. Because in South Florida, attorneys are a dime a dozen yeah i think that's everywhere but specifically yes. in florida um and how many content creators of value yeah. are are there right now i'm sure maybe in five years yes. there might be more but right now i just had something really good and i wanted to take advantage of it with still using my legal knowledge and everything that i've learned in those years while i was there you know that's awesome when you, you know, you've created this very fun and engaging brand, you've brought your own culture into it, your own history, your love for food, you know, you've created this fantastic brand with, you know, you were just saying it, so many people are creating the, you know, everybody's turning into a content creator in some sort of way. What would you recommend for people who are wanting to go create their own brand, who are wanting to do their own thing in this massive world and market today where it seems like everybody is trying to do their own thing and become their own personal brand? Yeah. So in order to become your own personal brand, you have to be your own person. You can't kind of duplicate somebody else. You have to just be yourself. Um, it's a lot harder than it sounds. And this this career, this path is a lot harder than it actually looks too. Yeah. So it's being consistent. And if you really like it, continue doing it just because 
one video going viral doesn't mean your next five are going to go viral or vice versa. Just because you post five videos that don't go viral doesn't mean your sixth one isn't going to go viral. Um, so it's all about just if you genuinely love doing it, stay with it um, and do it because you love it, not because you want free food or not because you want to be famous or whatever it may be, you know, famous. Um, it's, it's, should be out of passion rather than out of any secondary reason. I think that consistency, you know, is the name of the game. It really, it truly is. Um, and it, I think it's easier said than done for a lot of people. Um, I'm sure you know that, but it's just, it's, it's the name of the game and it's the most important thing, uh, when approaching creating content, creating your own brand, um, it's the hardest thing I think sometimes too. Yeah. And it's not just consistency when we're talking about like posting daily, Yeah, it's consistency about your, your substance of what you're posting and why you're posting it. That's the biggest thing that I'm, that I always think about that. I try to answer the why. Yeah. Yeah. Why do people want to see this? Why should people hear about this? Why should people know about this? Not, it shouldn't, again, everyone's different, but me personally, I try not to make it about me. Yeah. I'm just the vessel of the information. I want it to be about this cool spot this spot that the owners are amazing the food is amazing the atmosphere whatever it may be but me just tell be the storyteller for the information and when you do it that way and you kind of make it left less self-centric i think people receive it in a better way and you get like less trolls to be honest on instagram <laughs> it's very true very true mm -hmm. i want to hop into your content strategy mind as we're right on this from a few different perspectives from a platform perspective you're on instagram you're on tiktok you're on all of the platforms doing all of the things mm -hmm. what is how do you approach okay here's what instagram here's what we're doing on tiktok because instagram is your biggest and your that's where you spend a lot of your time and your focus but what does your mind look like in terms of a platform content strategy so Instagram, like you said, is my focus. That's my bread and butter. That's my, that's my first thought. I am creating content for Instagram because that is the platform that I grew with. And that's also the platform that I feel the most connected with my audience. So, and I just feel like for what I do, yeah, the tools and features that Instagram provides makes it easier for the consumer to receive it and save it and share it and it just feels a little more, a little easier. Um, TikTok, the videos get repurposed, but I also look at it as a more casual platform. Um, so I might post something that's a little bit less polished on TikTok than Instagram. Um, and maybe something is made for a younger demographic, like a restaurant or, or an activity or something. I am then shifting my focus and creating for a TikTok because most likely I will not post that on Instagram. Yeah. Um, the all the other platforms, Snapchat, YouTube, um, Facebook, whatever they may be, Threads, X, Twitter, um, that's all. If I had more of me, I would be able to post there consistently, but. I try to stick to consistency on like two platforms at least. Yep. And then if I get to the other ones, it's because I had a lot of extra time yeah. to be able to post on those, on those platforms. Cause it's tough. Cause you post something on Instagram and you want to start engaging with, you want to stay on Instagram and engage with the people that are engaging with you. And then I get, I let it like marinate for 10 minutes and then I go to TikTok and then I post it on TikTok. And then I'm playing this like seesaw yeah. back and forth game of, of between the two apps for at least an hour, an hour after I post. And let me tell you, I wish there was two of me because it'd make getting things a lot like it'd make things a lot easier in terms of getting. Oh, yeah. Um, 
But I love how you approach that. And I think it, what you said was totally true, like focusing on two platforms. It's super smart. And I think everybody thinks that they have to be everywhere all the time. Like, no, Mm -hmm. pick where you have your strengths. And like you were talking about where you have your audience and where your bread and butter is and go from there. Because I think a lot of people are like, I have to get everywhere all at one time. Like, no, I'm like, know where your people are and go, go there and do what you need to do. Yeah. I, I think even just focus on one. Two is is the second step. Just focus on one, and then when you feel more comfortable, then start juggling that. But focus just on one and do that one really well. While we're on this, have you done, like, research or work at all to, like, hey, this is, like, who my target audience is on Instagram, or this is who is kind of seeing my stuff on Instagram, like the demographics, anything like that? So Instagram... Each platform kind of when uh, when you have a certain profile, they give you those analytics and those insights. So I know that, and it's always changing, but for the most part, I know where the percentages lie. It's Instagram, the, the majority lies between like 25 and 35 age, age wise. And then gender, I think females control about like close to 60%, but it's around like 50 seven now but it, when i first started when i told you that i had to shift my my approach it was because females had 80 percent of my following oh. so now it's closer to 50 50 okay but but that's just because i feel like guys are using instagram and social media more now okay to receive that's- to receive their news to receive their news like i feel like actual date like tv or magazine or they're kind of like gone yeah yeah um so to receive their news and their sports whatever it is like those platforms the 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 espns of the world the bleacher reports they've gotten better about posting on social media which allows for more guys to be on their phones i totally agree but that's crazy that you start like snapchat when you did start like 80 percent, or instagram when you started like 80 percent was good like that is nuts just to be able to hear that number yeah, it's massive. It's a massive amount. Coming back to the content strategy side, but now actually getting into how you approach when you're going to create a video or working with a business, whatever it may be, how do you approach, okay, we're going to eat here. This is what I want to do. This is how my mind's working. So a lot of creators, influencers, whatever you want to call it, work differently um, on this approach. Um I work differently, but I, it's multifaceted. So the one thing that I stay true to though, is that I don't solicit any business. So I'm not going to reach out to said restaurant and say, Hey, I'm Mr. Eats. Give, give, pay me, give me free food. Give me, um, I'm going to dinner tonight, expecting something in return. Yeah. Um, how it works for me is one, I either just go on my own and whether it's for dinner, for lunch, and I either bring my whole setup, which is like my tripod, my phone, my extra lights, um, sometimes my camera, depending on the type of restaurant it is. And I just don't let anybody know. And I film the content because I genuinely love that place. I maybe have been there before. I, there might be like a, place without even an Instagram, um, like those type of spots or brand new spot. They don't have budget to, to work with creators. They don't have any of that. Um, so that's one approach. Uh, the, the second approach is when restaurants invite me to go and make content for them. Um, then I have like a media deck that I send to them that has all my insights and analytics and, um, kind of broken down of a sliding scale of my rate card of what my content to create content for them, what that would charge them, but it's not a flat fee depending. It's depending on the business that approaches me. A food truck is going to have a much cheaper, um, ROI return and rate than, place with a full bar that's been open for 10 years so and i would like to add that 
just because I'm charging them doesn't mean that they're automatically going to get posted on my feed. So once we agree on this rate and the date and, and before I even get out there, I send them an agreement that states, if I don't like the food, I don't post it. It's a subjective clause within the agreement that um, kind of says if it's not to the quality that it's a very subjective, but it's not to the quality where I think it's comparable to everything else in my feed, I am not going to post it and I'm not going to take the money and it will be constructive criticism and it will be more of a consulting aspect and I'll may, I'll give them whatever content that I made that doesn't have my likeness or images. But for me, yeah. maintaining a reputation is much more valuable than whatever dollar amount that they were going to pay me. Um, so that's the second way, which is if they, if they, the owners reach out to me, then there's other companies that have, um, marketing agencies, PR agencies, um, those people that invite creators out to, to media dines and those things, those I take much 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 more like much less frequently uh, when you're first getting started that's a good way to get in and get content without having to pay for it um because it's it works on like a trade basis most of the time uh, these big restaurants pay these companies to get creators to work for free essentially um it's not great but it's a way to get in yeah. and it's a way to get good content at, at good places yeah. and to do it consistently because realistically people, and I don't want to tell people how to manage their finances, but going out to eat every single day on your own dime is not the best yeah. approach, especially in Miami. I love that you stay true to your community and your followers though. Like if it's not something that you would feel comfortable sharing, like you're not going to share it. And I love that you do that because I think most of the time people would just grab the money and run and to like post it. And that's, that's a massive difference. Yeah. It's the most important part to be honest, because anybody could be doing that that way because it's an easy way out. But it's, it's just the truth about how to compare things. And yeah, yeah. it's, it's being able to do that also because of the experiences that I have already under my belt. I've been doing this now for seven years. Um, so when I see something, when I taste something, when I understand how a business is being run and what food's getting served to me, I know, and I feel confident enough to tell them the reason why. I can't just say like, eh, it doesn't taste that good. You know, I give them an, a, an in-depth yeah. type of feedback as to why. And I tell them, I, I can tell where you got this bread, where you got this burger, where you yeah. got this meat. Like it's frozen. You got it from this place. How long has it been sitting there? Yeah. Nothing's too creative. Nothing's like the menu's not cohesive. Like you're trying to do too much. Like let me help you, but let me help you not by sending people in here. Let me help you in another way to get people, get you ready. Yeah. And then we can, we can come back. Most of the time they don't want me back to be honest, <laughs> but what the the purpose is and what I try to do is let me get you ready yeah. to then get people in here after yeah. whenever that may be. Yeah. So that's why I also don't love going to places right when they open because when they open, they're not ready. Well, and it's a little bit more showboaty when they first open. They're trying to entertain everybody. They're trying to bring people in. But I totally agree with you. The food is not is never the best the when they first open compared to a month to a year later. It's like anything. Once you get your rhythm, that's when you really want to be a fan of or or go to a place or one year that's when you're working your best so that's when you want to go to the place so the food might be the same exact food that they're going to serve you in a month from now but the service might be better the the the, the wait time is going to be less like there's more to it and you'd want to make sure that 
Yeah, sure. Because I can go on my own right when, you know, right when the restaurant opens at not, at 11 a.m. And I'm the only guy in the restaurant. I'm going to get great service, whether they know me or not. Of course. But not everyone has the luxury to be able to be at the restaurant at 11 a.m. Most people are going to go on the weekends or after work and the restaurant's going to be packed. And now that same kitchen has to deal with the balancing act of serving people. Um, there's a line out the door and they have to deal with, you know, the, the kitchen being hectic and not really getting that rhythm. So that rhythm is important once you start getting that traction and all those people coming in at the same time. Awesome. I, th I think it's super smart. I think it, like that approach is exactly how people should view restaurants when they open as well. Um, it's, you know, exactly how you just described it. And I think it's super smart. Go ahead. And it also like, it, it helps the creator too, because I go again it, yeah. and I have a great experience, but then these people go expecting yeah. the same experience that I had and they can't do it as well as it was for me. Yeah. So that's huge for the creator's reputation too, because you want it to be as close as possible to the patron's experience. Absolutely. Well, and, and the hope is, you know, that you like it enough that you're coming back, you're bringing more people with you when you're not on the clock and you're, you know, you continue to come back as a favorite place. Like that's always the hope and goal. That's, that's the hope and goal for everyone, but not everyone, not every place is like that. Um, so I actually have a map on my website. It's, okay. it's Mr. Eats 305.com. And it's a Miami food map that's kind of like the Yelp, the Google Maps, the, yeah. all those tools. However, it's filtered with my experiences and my thoughts. So on there, you'll find it broken down by uh, cuisine. You can type in bakeries, sushi, pizza, burgers, date night, um, takeout, healthy food. But there's also a tab for favorites. And those favorites those scale because it, the, I mean, the, they range from a bakery all the way to a fine dining restaurant. So take that, you know, as, as it is because yeah. people see favorites are like, this is the best food ever. It's like, no, this just might be the best bakery for me. Yeah. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, that's the beauty of, of food. It's, it's all subjective. So I might like something and people might not like it. So it's always, a just a discovery thing and that's why I post not just places that I'd go back to immediately but because I think it's cool I think they're doing something interesting it might not be my favorite but if they're doing a good job and I think the food's good it might be someone else's favorite someone that might live down the block from that neighborhood or has never visited this neighborhood of Miami because Miami from end to end Miami Dade County is like two hours without traffic from Homestead right. to Aventura right so Miami has a lot of exploring. It's a lot bigger than people think. It's not just South Beach. It's not just Brickell. It's not just downtown. You know, it's from the from the beaches to the Everglades. And I love that map. And I love all the icons and that you can move around and truly get to see in each little, you know, city, whatever it may be. Like you get to see everything, which is so cool. With that map in mind, have people come up to you and been like, Mr. Eats, I want... So, you know, you're traveling around. Have you thought about putting a map together for New York or for another city? Like, have people come up to you and asked you that question? So they haven't actually come up to me, but they've okay. written, written to me about it. Um, and what I do, because on that map that I created for the website, I did yeah. want to focus it just on Miami for now. Um, but in order to cover because i have visited a lot of cities and cover more ground instagram has a subscription feature where you can like subscribe to okay. the creator and get exclusive access okay. um i on my subscriptions i have every city and and country that i have visited i think i think there's over uh, over 40 different maps yeah. right now so i've created my google maps similar to what i have for yeah. Yeah. The, the miami page but for each city, New York, Austin, uh, LA, San Diego, like every city, every country that I've been to. And that's where those people could find it. Okay. They just have to subscribe on Instagram. And it's honestly, I don't even know what it's at, maybe a dollar, $2. Yeah. But you get 
a map itinerary where if you were to type in, like if you were to be presently in New York in Times Square, that map will tell you what the closest place is to eat that's not the fast food chain that's uh-huh. that you're looking at. It it's the you know mom and pop shop or the good pizza spot yeah. or, or it's those places that are filtered through my experiences. I love that because, like I said, I love your Miami map because of how interactive it is and how it covers so much. Um, so I love that you do that for other cities. As we're getting to the end of. 2023, which is crazy to say, and getting ready to 2024. um, Is there like, what goals are you trying to finish out the rest of the year with? And what are you looking to do in 2024? So for the end of 2023, um, well, I have my wedding, Uh, I'm getting married a a month from yesterday. So it's already within the month. Thank you. So that's, that's in the front of my head that you know, work and all that come comes after. Um, so spending time with, with my wife, uh, the, the, that following month after kind of making sure that she's, uh, the focus and we're, we're spending time together yeah. is, and is kind of the focus for the rest of the year and whatever comes with work is, is secondary. Right. Um, because think about it, it's, it's the weddings in October, you have November, which is the, the time for you. And then December is holidays. So, and holidays for family and, and, and we're also, we're renovating a house that we, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I'm not complaining. It is blessings. Um, but that's kind of trying to have everything in line, work, family, house, um, for 2024. So when 2024 does come, um, there's a lot of things happening. You know, I'd, I'd love to showcase the map more. I haven't really unveiled it. Um, that's something I'll probably do by the end of this year and, and make sure I, I try to kind of get that map as good as it can get to help as many people, so whatever that may be. If people are looking for more menu items on there, more photos, more reservation buttons, more of my Instagram inter- integrated onto the map, um, that's a big focus. Uh, I have merch coming soon. This is my hat. As you can see, it has... My logo there that says "Don't take a bite without me," and my my Mister Eats M, um, as well as sweatshirts and hoodies and sweatpants and t-shirts. Um, those should be dropping within the next month or so um, to prep for the cold weather in Miami. <laughs> all, all all sixty degrees. Um, that one week of cold weather. Yeah, yeah, and and then. Yeah, just doing as, as as much as I can, covering as much ground in Miami and, and elsewhere, yeah. and just kind of keeping the brand out out there and, and active, and helping as many restaurants and helping as many people find new spots or classic spots as I can. I love that. Yeah. Um, and I love the merch too. Like I love your your phrase. It's so good. Um, thank you. It's so good. And I'm so glad you're doing merch because I love, I love the colors. I love your M like it's branding on point. So I, I have a massive appreciation for branding. And so anytime I see good stuff, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. I'm like, this is fantastic. So, um, I can't thank wait you. to see the merch that drops for the cold weather that Miami is going to get. <laughs> yeah. Luck, luckily we'll, we can ship anywhere else too. Yeah. If you're not in Miami, like <laughs> where it's actually really cold. Yeah. The, the hoodie, the hoodies are good. The sweaters are good. The sweatpants are all good quality. I'm, I'm proud of it. So, awesome. and it's just the first collection of, of many to come. Um, but we wanted to make sure that the first one was like a namesake cool. kind of my, my color branding, my standard branding, and then we can get a little, a little fun, a little more fun, a little cool, a little crazier with love the that. next ones. I love yeah. that. My last question for you is just what inspires you? On the day to day, I think just the the reward of of helping so many people and not just you know helping businesses that's that's great, but it's that I'm helping businesses and that I'm helping people find great food and and when people share food with each other, that's like such an impactful thing the breaking bread together and and just having that conversation, putting the phone away and like enjoying that 
yeah. moment. So when it's kind of corny, but it's what it is, is that you're helping people discover and, and live moments that they remember. Um, and that it, I'm doing it in a city that I'm so passionate about and that I love the community here and I love how much it's growing, how quickly it's growing and that we're putting it on the map and that I'm just like a small part of that is a fun thing to think of and a rewarding thing. And I love that too. I love, you know, I think a meal, like you said, is sometimes we talk about it all the time, but when you sit down with family or friends and start to eat, like you, I could sit for hours at a mm-hmm. round table and talk. And that's, that's a lot of what it happens with. I come from a big family. And so we do that quite often and you just get lost in time. And so I have a massive appreciation for, you know, when you do sit down for a meal, like put the phone down, put the technology away. And like, that's what happens. Um, yeah. As long as you take a picture first before you eat, yes. then you're good. The phone eats first. That's what yeah, I, that's what exactly. we say all the time. The phone eats first. Um, but I can't thank you enough for joining me today and having walking me through Mr. Eats 305 and uh, the brand you've created. So I appreciate it so much. Um, if you guys do not follow him, please, all of his socials are going to be down below. Go follow along in his journey. Um, but I just can't thank you enough for taking the time and talking with me today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And again, thank you for those who follow, who are about to start following. If you don't uh, know about the website that we've spoken about, yeah. Mystery 305 too, that's where the map is. That's the best way to navigate Miami yeah. for me. And if you guys, guys have any other questions, shoot me a DM and I'm happy to help. Yeah. Thank you so much. And as always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye y'all. There you go.